Live from Irondale, Alabama, EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of the birth of Mother Angelica. Here now are Father Joseph Mary and Doug Keck. And thank you so much, Tom Gray, for that wonderful introduction. I'm Doug Keck, uh, sitting here in our radio studios along with my good friend, Father Joseph Mary Wolf as we bring you the solemn mass for the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birthday coming up mm-hmm. from Rome. And it's great to see you again, Father, from uh, last night. We had a great show, right? We did. It's always fun to talk about Mother Angelica. There's a lot of humorous stories, but also we appreciate just her um, no-nonsense uh, you know, theology and teachings. <laughs> Absolutely. And a big part of the show last night was our chairman of the board and CEO, Michael Warsaw, who joined us from Rome and likewise joins us right now. How are you, Michael? I'm great. Good to be with you. It's a great day to, you know, celebrate Mother and to, to talk about Mother and kind of Father, as you said, you know, the the, the wonderful and funny stories of Mother, mm-hmm. but the really profound stories of the way that she impacted so many lives. So it's great to be with you all. For those who didn't hear last last night and didn't join us on the show, Michael, you have a lot of insight into the actual church itself mm-hmm. and how that was picked and, and why you decided to kind of feature a Mass in Rome for Mother Angelica. Why don't you explain that? Sure. So one of the traditions that we began uh, right after Mother's death, really, uh, was to have an annual Mass in memory of Mother here in Rome. Uh, and that's been celebrated over these past seven years since her since her passing uh, at many of the significant churches of Rome, St. Peter's, uh, many others, by uh, some of the leading prelates of the church. Cardinal Pell, for example, the late Cardinal Pell celebrated that Mass one year. Uh, Cardinal Burke, uh, among others. So we really thought um, this year in particular celebrating and commemorating the 100th anniversary of Mother's birth that we should do something uh, special as well. And so we we chose uh, the Santo Spirito Church, which is right near the Vatican, a few blocks from the Vatican, just about a block from the EWTN uh, offices here uh, in Rome. And uh, it's a beautiful church. Uh, it's It dates to the 16th century. Um, and it, it uh, was designated by uh, Pope St. John Paul uh, as the official uh, shrine of divine mercy and the divine mercy devotion uh, here in Rome uh, a number of years ago. Um, but the church itself also has, you know, so many uh, artistic uh, features that connect to Mother. So, for example, there are some beautiful uh, works of art that depict uh, the Annunciation. And, of course, Mother Angelica's title in religious life was, you know, uh, Angelica of the Annunciation, uh, her, her, her name in religious life. Um, but also, you know, beautiful depictions of the, uh, the Assumption, which, uh, of course, was the day that she entered into uh, religious profession and religious life, as well as the day on which she chose to launch uh, EWTN. Um, and the fact that the church itself is really um, the shrine in Rome uh, for divine mercy, I think, uh, you know, ties so beautifully to Mother. Uh, mm-hmm. Mother was such a, uh, a promoter of the uh, uh, of the uh, devotion of divine mercy, uh, and and you know I think EWTN, uh, after the devotion was restored to use in the church, uh, EWTN really played a significant role in in spreading that devotion and making that devotion known, not just in the United States but globally. So I think for right. for many reasons, I think there are many. Um, many connections of Santo Spirito uh, to Mother. Uh, my, I don't know for certain, but my guess is that during some of her trips here to Rome uh, over the years, she probably uh, visited this church and, and spent some time uh, praying in this church. Um, so it's a beautiful, I think, place for, uh, for us to uh, remember her and to commemorate this, this centenary. Right. I also think in terms of, as you indicated, I remember my first real exposure to Divine Mercy really was from watching E.W. Chan back in the days with uh, Father George Kosicki. George Kosicki. And, uh, yes. and then Vinnie mm-hmm. Flynn and, mm-hmm. and, and, and that. The other thought I thing I thought was interesting, uh, kind of a connection with the Santo Spiritu, was the idea that it ri- originally started basically as being something for Saxons coming from England. And I mm. thought, here you're English-speaking people. <laughs> 
and a connection to that. And obviously, the first outreach that EWTN did was in English. Hmm. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's there's so many ties and so many, uh, so many connections to to mother and EWTN and the apostolate of EWTN. So, we're we're very uh, very grateful and and uh, I think blessed to be able to hold this mm-hmm. uh, this liturgy today there. You know, Michael, when I was there for EWTN's coverage of the canonization of Pope Saint John Paul II, I visited that church where they had a relic of Pope John Paul. It was his blood, where you could come and you could venerate the relic. And uh, do you know if they have a place of devotion to Pope John Paul there? They do. There is still a devotional uh, uh, altar there for for, uh, Pope St. John Paul, um, and that continues as part of the life of of the church uh, there. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, just... Uh, steps away from the basilica where uh, Pope St. John Paul is interred uh, and where tens of thousands, millions, really, mm-hmm. of pilgrims go to, to visit his uh, his tomb. And I always like the connection, you know, with Mother Angelica and Pope St. John Paul II, that when we launched 24 hours a day, September 1987, that was the very time Pope St. John Paul II visited the southern part of the United States. And Mother called us into the studio, and she said, we're going to cover it 24 hours. Well, Mother, you know, we didn't have that many resources at that time. But she was determined we are going to do that, and we're going to begin broadcasting 24 hours a day, even though we didn't have that much programming. She said, well, just repeat until we do add more programming. So little by little, step by step. (laughs) Right, right. Well, and of course, many years later, after you know, tw- being 24/7 in the United States, and uh, you know, Mother's desire to expand EWTN globally. Um, you know, she again visited Pope St. John Paul and and uh, shared with him the plans uh, that EWTN had in 1996 um, to begin the international distribution of EWTN television. And and uh, I remember, you know, her talking about uh, showing showing the Holy Father the different satellite maps and where we were going, you know, and him saying, you know, and then, you know, and, and then, <laughs> and then. And so, uh, right. and mother being mother, uh, there was always, there was always a next page. There was always something more. Uh, it's interesting you say that because it sounds like mother was being outmothered by, by John Paul II. <laughs> In a way, he probably was. Yes, yes, she was. Yes. <laughs> she often spoke about the blessing that he gave her at the end of that visit because he had actually walked off and then he returned and he placed his hand on her head and she just felt like she had so, so much encouragement and just the, the power of that blessing to continue the work that she was doing and certainly she accomplished so much. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at where EWTN is today, you know, when you when you think back over these past four decades, um, from the monastery garage and uh, you know the sheep and, and goats and the nuns <laughs> there in Irondale to um, where we are today globally with you know so many services and so many languages and so many people through literally every form of media that exists, uh, we're preaching the gospel to the world, mm-hmm. which was Mother's great hope and desire. Uh, for EWTN and for her humble little apostolate, but uh, none of that would exist. None of that would be what it is today were it not for Mother, were it not for her great witness, that witness to providence. You know, I think that's the, mm-hmm. that's her her story. That's that's her witness to all of us and to the church is, is that reliance upon God's providence, which was at the core and the heart of everything she did with EWTN, but it was it was the foundation of her life uh, throughout, uh, long before she ever felt the call to begin EWTN and the, the great work of evangelization that the network has become. Right. I mean, one of the things you think of as we as we prepare for the solemn mass for the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth, uh, coming from Rome, Santo Spiritu in, in Rome, uh, speaking with Michael Warsaw, our chairman and CEO, and Father Joseph Mary Wolf, as we begin our coverage for today, uh, again, as we honor Mother's 100th anniversary of her birthday. And one of the things that I was 
interested in was also the idea that so many people today, you know, they watch Mother, it's almost like she's still alive in their <laughs> mind. But it's also the idea that a lot of people don't realize that Mother's ongoing yes wasn't one yes. Mm. And it was many times overcoming obstacles throughout her life uh, and throughout even the startup and, and the running of EWTN over the years. Right, Michael? Absolutely, absolutely. There were there were always obstacles. There were always uh, needs. There were always uh, you know uh, challenges. Uh, you know, very often financial, but but uh, very often spiritual, and and the spiritual warfare that that she experienced in in trying to push forward. But you know, mother was never deterred. She never lost heart. She always persevered. Um, you know looking looking forward uh you know living in the present moment with eyes you know uh fixed ahead and and um uh, you know she always always uh said yes in whatever way god called her uh to uh to serve him and and to do his work uh she always said yes and and even at the end of her life um with her stroke and and uh you know the suffering that she had in those last many years she embraced that she embraced that suffering she embraced that life of prayer that it brought and mm -hmm. and in a way that isolation that that it brought um and she offered all of that for the for the network for its ewtn family um and and she at that time i think did her greatest work for the apostolate of EWTN, and I think now, even more so as an advocate in heaven uh, and an intercessor for us in heaven for the work of the network and our EWTN family, um, she does and is doing the most important work ever. Uh, and it all started with that yes. It all started mm -hmm. with that yes. And we can actually see a correlation, can't we, between when mother had the stroke and she was debilitated by that and then bedridden and the growth of the network that it continued to grow and and since yes. her passing too, new doors are opening and, and it's like yes. we do believe we have someone who's helping us from above. Yes, absolutely. There's no there's no question about that. You know, one of the stories I tell sometimes when I'm speaking um, about the network and about mother is, you know, that story of how... Um, she asked the Lord in prayer one time, you know, why why he had chosen her. And the the answer she received to that question was, well, Angelica, you were not the first mm -hmm. I asked. <laughs> you were the first who said yes. Yeah. You know, and I think that's uh, very powerful uh, and a very powerful lesson for all of us, you know, to to always be discerning God's will for us and and to be open to saying yes, right. to be open to saying yes to the things that he calls us to, you know, and I, and I think as we, as we look back at mother's life and this, this hundredth anniversary of her birth, I, I think, um, I think those are the things that we have to, we have to take away from her, that great witness of trust in God and that great willingness to say yes to God, knowing that he would provide what was necessary for her and and for all of us right. to do what he calls us to do so it's a beautiful beautiful story a beautiful meditation i think right this and, day and as you indicated obviously with mother and john uh, angelica's name and the assumption the connection to mary mm -hmm. and and in a, in, a, in a small way mother's fiat uh, in the footsteps of mary's fiat right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i like something that jeanette said last night too that every fiat bears fruit right so there's mm -hmm. a fecundity to every time we say yes, just like Our Lady says yes, and there's this incarnation that takes place. But every fiat, and Our Lady certainly said it more than once too, every fiat we say bears this fruit for the good of souls, for the good of the world, for the good of the church. And mm -hmm. for today's uh, actual Mass, it's, uh, it's our bishop, right, from Birmingham is going to be the main it, celebrant, right? It is Bishop Stephen Reka, who is the Bishop of Birmingham uh, and a member of the Board of Governors of EWTN. Uh, bishop Reka will be the, the celebrant and homilist uh, for this Mass. Um, it's providential also that um, this week is, in Rome is referred to as America Week uh, because uh, so many 
events and apostolates um, that uh, are from the United States uh, uh, hold hold events during this this particular week. Um, so uh, there are a number of people from America, a number of bishops and other prelates, and uh, just some great folks from many of our. Uh, partners that we work with and in so many other apostolates like the Knights of Columbus or Focus, um, the Papal Foundation. Uh, all of these people are here. So uh, this is getting this mass uh, on her, her anniversary of her birth, on her birthday, uh, enabled so many folks to uh, who were going to be here for these other events to really uh, be able to pause and to remember Mother and uh, and to be a part of this, so it's really beautiful. And I, uh, I had the privilege of hosting an event this morning um, for the Papal Foundation and the members of the the Papal Foundation, and um, we shared, of course, the story of Mother's uh, anniversary and talked about that. And it was it was really beautiful to hear their response uh, and their love for Mother, particularly on this day. Absolutely, that's great to hear. Thank you so much, uh, Michael Warsaw. Thank you so much for organizing and putting this together. I'm Doug Keck here along with Father Joseph Mary Wolf. Coming up, we've got the solemn mass for the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birthday. My mother's mother-in-law. EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. We have another call. Hello? I want to ask you, Mother, in heaven will we have a free will the same as we have on earth? I hope not. <laughs> I could see her coming into the room, and I was just so impressed at how difficult it was for her just simply to walk. And she sat down, and we were all alone in a room, and she just looked at me, and I could see the Lord in her face. And so I just began to share with her my love for all people and for the unborn, and that we were about to do this pro-life activity out in front of the abortion center, and that the federal government could levy very heavy penalties. And I said, Mother, we are willing to do this no matter what. Would you help us to get the word out? And she said, I believe your call to this. And yes, I will speak. I will let the world know. Mother, you've reminded me that God has a plan for me, even when I feel so small. Thank you, and please pray for me. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. I'm asking for holiness. Body of Christ, heal me. Blood of Christ, drench me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. We need to be cleansed so bad. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. Good Jesus, hear me. I like that. Instead of getting angry when something happens, instead of blowing your top, say, oh, good Jesus, hear me. In your wounds, shelter me from turning away. Keep me from the evil one. Protect me at the hour of death. Call me into your presence. Lead me to praise you with all your saints forever and ever. EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. And we certainly are. Thrilled to do it, Doug Keck with Father Joseph Mary Wolf, and of course, Father, we're uh, kind of here in preparation for the mass that's coming up from Rome uh, in honor of Mother's hundredth from uh, Santa Spiritu. We just got off the phone, of course, uh, our yeah. line talking with our own chairman and CEO Michael Warsaw, who's there, obviously uh, representing EWTN along with mm -hmm. uh, some other uh, senior members from EWTN, and uh, we. We've had a whole series of things we've done, and you worked on the Mass that the Friars did today as well as the Rosary, right? Yes. So our choir wanted to amp it up a bit, <laughs> and they certainly did. It was just a beautiful Mass I can celebrate it with Father Mark, who gave a beautiful homily, kind of a nice summary, really, of Mother Spirituality and how it touched him personally, but also how her teaching just was in accord with what Vatican II was encouraging us to do, to speak to the culture today and how Mother did that so effectively. So we actually had some strings there, cellists and violins, and uh, we actually had a couple of the pieces that were Mother's favorites. So I'd asked the sisters one time, well, what were some of Mother's favorite hymns? And they said, Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. So they did that as the offertory, a special arrangement that they had with the strings. 
And then the closing hymn was another of Mother's favorites, which was Be Thou My Vision. And again, it was just a remarkable performance. And uh, That's interesting uh, yeah. you say that, too, because uh, the Journey Home special uh, mm-hmm. that's airing on television right now where uh, Marcus interviewed Mother and Joe, his favorite him is be thou my vision oh, okay. and, and in fact wanted that maybe that to be the theme of the journey home show when we first launched it hmm. back in uh, 97 98 and that's really what it is isn't it be thou my vision lord let your will be done in me however i might accomplish it you know and it's just a beautiful uh, hymn that encourages us to let god be our all in all Absolutely. And we've had programming all week. Last night, of course, we had the EW10 uh, live program. The father was on with Father Mitch and uh, Jeanette and some great uh, reflections uh, from Mm -hmm. some of the people in the audience and people calling in on Mother Angelica. And if you go to our Facebook page, you'll probably see some more reflections, people uh, commenting on what Mother meant to them over the years. But just a reminder that because of our EWTN uh, On Demand, as well as YouTube channels, you can you can still catch that. You can catch the Mass mm-hmm. from this morning, uh, certainly the homily, uh, and then as well you can uh, catch the live show that aired last night. It will re-air on the network, but also on our On Demand page. You can go to that 24-7 as will this also, the Mass that's coming up, if for any reason uh, you don't get to listen mm-hmm. to it or you don't get to see it on television today, uh, it will be there as well on both of those uh, platforms. As Michael was alluding to, mm-hmm. uh, EW10's, uh, yeah. you know, EW10's everywhere, basically. Mm-hmm. Yes, and you know, Mother had her yes, but she also, by her example, taught us to say yes. And I often reflect upon that, yourself and so many others who have come here to work at the network are still here after decades. And why is that? Well, it's because we see this as a mission, but also it's God's call. And that it's something that Mother herself would say was bigger than herself. That he wanted to, as I see it, extend his mercy to the world, to give hope, to give encouragement, to call people back to life in his son, Jesus. You know, we were talking with Michael about uh, and divine providence and mother's reliance on that. And I wanted to ask you, what was th- the most powerful experience you ever personally had in, in seeing mother rely on divine providence? I think it was, well, we're going to jump 24 hours a day, which I mentioned earlier. Right. And, and we didn't have that many programs, but Mother wasn't concerned. Well, we'll just do what we have to do, and then it will continually grow. But I remember one event that uh, has stuck with me. And this was, I was an engineering brother at the time, and that's what I thought I would always be. I would be behind the scenes. And... Uh, so I was working on the transmitters. That was my main responsibility. And we were covering Pope John Paul II's visit. Mm-hmm. And we had lost one of our transmitters. Often lightning would strike here, and one of them would get blown out. And then, and so I'm just kind of hoping and praying and trying to resolve things that the second one doesn't go out, because then we're off the air. Right. And we're covering the papal event. And so I just said a quick prayer and it, if the one went out, actually the second one went off the air and it just, a, a light went on to move one uh, IC from one transmitter to the other and we're back on the air quickly. But that's, you know, one of the events that I experienced just personally, but the sisters used to have a saying that uh, just in time, that God's providence would show up just in time. And God did that to show that it's from him. Right, and I think anybody who's worked here over the years, it's kind of the loaves and the fishes. It's a bit of an ongoing <laughs> daily mir- miracle. And uh, we all have small mm-hmm. versions of that where it seemed like uh, there's a dead end, this isn't going to work, and at the last minute things work themselves out if we just stayed the course, right? And that was something Jeanette mentioned last night, Mother's Constancy. You know, whatever opposition or difficulties we're going to face, We're going to go forward. We're going to trust in God's mercy and just constantly trust him. Mother told me one time that the Lord taught her one lesson her whole life long, she said, and that was to trust him more. (laughs) And you see that in her life as she had to trust him as now she's going to launch this television network and then the shortwave radio and the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament and her health fails And all of those things, she had to trust him more. And what you saw, 
because I would visit her often when she was bedridden off and would have mass in her room, especially on Sundays, you saw this beautiful flowering of grace in her soul too, you know, in um, her trust and complete surrender to God. Right. And, and thinking in, in terms of Mother Angelica and her, her youth as well, and I know you put together uh, the book on her stations mm-hmm. uh, that we had. And also, obviously, we had the rosary uh, today mm-hmm. earlier. Uh, and uh, and I just thought mm-hmm. some of the meditations, now were those meditations that Mother wrote herself? Yeah, so those were from her writings, from her mini books. Okay. <laughs> so that was how it kind of all started, right? She started writing these mini books on a yellow legal pla- pad as she's praying before the Blessed Sacrament. They were typed up and they were sent out and then she started to get invitations. Right. I, I thought some of them, one of them says, it, un, under the baptism of the Jordan, if I am to love my neighbor as myself, I must first arrive at an understanding of my own dignity. Did you see that in Mother? Yes, because you think about it, she had every reason to just say, well, give up, you know. Here you are, your father left your family, you're living in poverty, you're living on the wrong side of the tracks, so you're not worth anything. Well, she discovered, you know, with that miracle that she received, that she was precious to God. And she experienced that so profoundly that the rest of her life was like, I want to give my life to God. I want to make him known and loved. Another one of the reflections I thought was interesting, and and so much of what we do is is driven by the fact that our family supports the work Mm -hmm. that that happens here financially. But she put it out here, and I thought this was really important. And every time we ask anybody for help, she said, the greatest and most far-reaching light that Christian radiates to the world is the light of prayer. Yeah. And that's why I believe God founded it here because we have in the church as the two patrons for her missionary activity, both St. Francis Xavier, the great missionary, and St. Therese, the great contemplative. Because Therese herself talks about this prisoner she had come across in the newspaper. She didn't always read the newspaper. came across this article who was going to be executed and who was hardened. And she prayed for him. And at the last moment, he kissed the cross. So it was a sign to her, her prayers had won a soul. And that just motivated her then to get dedicated her life to that. So we had, we have still both the contemplative dimension with the sisters praying for this mission and the voice proclaiming the gospel. Right. And one of the line mother had in her institution of the Eucharist one is, the Eucharist is food for starving souls. Amen. I'm Doug Keck here with Father Joseph Mary Wolf. We're just a few minutes away from our live mass with Bishop Stephen Reka from Rome as we here at EW10 commemorate Mother's 100th anniversary, the birth of our great foundress, Mother Angelica. Stay with us. EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. Now, somebody's asking me here to clarify something. I'm happy to. It says, should we really vote for anyone? One year I voted for Jesus. (laughs) He's the only one I thought could make it and would do a good job. Okay, so should you vote? Oh, yes, you should. Does it matter who we vote for? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to vote for candidates. I vote for life because it's an abomination to God, the culture of death. Every time I come down here to the network, I'm just absolutely struck that this is a miracle. EWTN is a miracle. There's no question about it. And it's a miracle that the Lord granted to the world and to the church through the faith of Mother Angelica. I mean. The, the heroism, the faith, uh, the willingness to stand firm in the midst of opposition and carry out the mission that God gave her to do is just so inspiring and, and, and such an important thing. It's been a rock of solidity, a rock of stability for millions of Catholics all over the world, and, and the best is yet to come. I think if you pray and you say to the Lord, Lord, I don't understand, thy will be done, that's a prayer of faith. If something wonderful happens and I say, thank you, Lord, that's a prayer of thanksgiving. 
If you're distressed and you say, Lord, help me, I can't do anything about this, that's a prayer of hope. And you say, Lord, I can't take one more thing. That's a prayer of desperation. If you're talking to him about it, that's prayer. EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. Happy birthday, Mother Angelica. And we are back here as we continue our prep time, waiting for the solemn mass and 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birthday coming from Rome uh, with our own bishop from Birmingham, uh, Bishop Breka being the homilist and celebrant. I'm joined as always with Father Joseph Mary Wolf. It's almost like answering the call here, part two. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when we first were introduced to Bishop Breka, we wanted to give him a tour of EWTN, which he was very interested in. So he came here and we watched the little introductory video we showed of the pilgrims. And he remarked after that, that mother's name is Mother Mary Angelica of the Annunciation, and how he received the appointment to Birmingham on the Feast of the Annunciation. So he th thought there was a connection mm. there in helping to support this work, and certainly he has been very maybe supportive. Maybe mother was maybe mother had some influence. You never maybe know. She did. You never know. <laughs> Speaking of influential things in mother's life, uh, you know, her early life had a lot to do with how she turned out, right? That she could understand people's sufferings because she had been through it herself, and she had struggled with it herself, and she came to an understanding. You know, I'm sure. As a young person, she even relates that, that she didn't understand. Did, does God care? You know, where is he? Why is everything wrong if he exists and he cares about me? But then when she had that experience, then it just changed everything for her. Right. I think we have a, a couple of clips with Mother from talking about those early days. My mother's mother-in-law was something else. <laughs> Now that I'm a, I'm a nun, I can't tell you what something else she was. <laughs> but anyway, she was a character, and she used to be able to take the bones out of a chicken, and you never know it. I mean, a chicken looked like a chicken, you know. But if you picked up the leg, it was crutch. There was nothing in there to stop you from crunching. Well, she was very angry at my mother because my mother couldn't do it. You know, my mother was a great cook, but she cleaned the chicken and she did whatever you do with chicken, put it in the oven. And she was griping at her for not doing it right. And I was, my, like the stove is here, my grandmother was here, and my mother here, and I was underneath here, you know. And I looked up at my grandmother, and I said, Oh, shut up, you all time talk, talk. <laughs> Three years old. And I didn't know anything about temptation. But see, that showed my character already. My mother, <laughs> my mother lifted me up and gave me a kiss because <laughs> it was years before I knew I did something wrong, you know. And that's Mother Angelica talking about <laughs> one of her early experiences, their father, which, uh, you know, that kind of uh, mm -hmm. standing up for what you think is right, <laughs> even at the age of three, right? Right, and how she could turn it into something you can laugh at, too. And yet the point is there, right? That right. Mother could give us the hard truths, and sometimes we have a hard time accepting the truth. But if there's a little sugar to sweeten it <laughs> with a little laughter, it helps us uh, to take that medicine a little more easily. <laughs> right, and as you alluded to earlier, you know, the tough times Mother went through mm -hmm. with her own family life is why she was so concerned about creating mm -hmm. the family for EW10, right. not only here in Irondale, but out through the network itself. I know we have uh, Mother talking about uh, her, her parents' divorce. You know, I learned a lot when my parents were divorced when I was six years old. That's when hell began. I learned a lot. 
because that kind of suffering can be very meritorious for you. Tonight before you go to bed, say, Jesus, bless my mother and thank you for all the pain and suffering of my life. It's all up there waiting for us. If you haven't been able to accept it, accept it now. Forgive her now. If you don't forgive her, it's going to stay in your heart till you die. And, and why make yourself more miserable by having an unforgiving spirit, huh? We don't know why people react the way they do. But we are responsible for the way I respond to their actions. So please forgive. When I was in the monastery, I was a junior profess. That means I was in temporary vows. My father finally came to see me. I was shocked. I only saw him seven times in my whole life. And my abbess came to me and she said, your father is here. And I said, huh? She said, your father's here and your aunt is with him. I never knew I had an aunt. So I went to the parlor, and we had the grate. And he looked at me and he started to cry. He said, this is your Aunt Mary. And I said, hello, Aunt Mary. And he said, uh, are you happy? And I said, yes. And he cried and cried. And finally he said to me, do you need anything? Well, <laughs> shocked because he never asked me that in my whole life. In fact, alimony was supposed to be five dollars a week. And one time he never gave it. I used to go up to that uh, courthouse and it looked like that desk was ten feet tall, you know. I'd go up there and I'd say, uh, my, I'm Rita Rizzo, is there any alimony? And she'd say, no, honey, not today. So finally I saw him. I found out where he worked. I'm tight nine, ten years old. And my mother would not go. So I thought, well, I'll go. So I found out where he worked and he gave, he gave me 50 cents. So I went home and uh, gave it to my mother and I won't tell you what she said. <laughs> um, so then a couple of weeks later I went to the courthouse in order to get alimony again and the girl said, well, he gave you $5, honey. And I said, no, he didn't. She said, I have a receipt here. He put two zeros after the, the 50 cents. I never went back again. So when he said, do you need anything, I almost dropped in. I said, yeah. My, my father was in dry cleaning business and, and, and tailor. And I said, I need some renews it. You know, it used to be a cleaning fluid. I don't know if you have it anymore. And so about a, a week later, he came back. And he had this can in his hand. And he looked at me and he said, uh, I'm sorry. He said, tell your mother I'm sorry. Well, that taught me a lesson. Say I had never seen him again, or say he had never come to the monastery to see me, I would have never known he was sorry, see? And if I'd have hated him, I would have been so wrong in the eyes of God because he was sorry, see? So we all have, you know, we all have our problems, huh? And some are, are very hard at the time, but you can bet that there's much good within it. And that's Mother Angelica talking about her parents' divorce. Mm -hmm. I'm Doug Keck here with Father Joseph Mary Wolf as we prepare moments away from the solemn mass for the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birthday, uh, which will be coming from Rome. Uh, San Santa Spiritu uh, mm -hmm. Church in Rome. And, and Father, I think it's always important for people when they hear those stories from Mother, they not only 
understand why she can relate, but they also understand that this is not somebody where everything was given to them, Mm -hmm. and they're so lucky. Because many times people say, well, it's easy for so-and-so to be so nice or happy. They never had my problems. Right. You know? Everybody has a cross we don't see. And Mother certainly had her share in so many ways, both the family sufferings, the poverty sufferings, the physical sufferings which was a constant companion. You know, she had constant back pain when she founded EWTN and began the network. And she would often go through different trials and she would see them as, well, the Lord's going to open some new doors for EWTN. So she broke her wrist. Well, what's the Lord going to do now? She could offer that up. And it was during the season of Lent. She said that the Lord often gave her her penance for Lent. And, but she was somewhat excited, but there's going to be some new door that's going to open because of this new offering of my suffering. And I think what's great about that, and that was my personal experience, at least uh, as one, uh, as with the vice president so sitting in with the meetings with Mother, with that was the fact that 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 she would rely on the Lord, and but if the Lord changed directions, mm-hmm. she was very sensitive. She was always testing is this where mm-hmm. we're supposed she would never get caught up and i've decided this is what i think we should be doing and i don't care if this doesn't look like it's the right thing to do she would do that if she mm-hmm. believed that that's what god wanted her to do yeah that she said well is it god's will well we'll find out <laughs> you know, if <laughs> right. it bears fruit right. you judge a tree by its fruit and so if it wasn't bearing fruit if it wasn't going anywhere well this is we need to go another avenue right. But I also like something that Sister Michael said. You know, she didn't allow any pity parties. (laughs) So Sister Michael's still alive. She's 91. She didn't allow any pity parties. If a door closed, you just go through another one. (laughs) Right, that that present moment, that Mm -hmm. that, that idea. And uh, exactly, uh, just the the sense that Mother would have that she'd say, okay. And I remember years ago, uh, some of us, uh, at least some of the lay people, you know, said, gee, Mother, you know, and people would think, well, when you're not here anymore, like, is Mm -hmm. somebody else going to take over? Is one of the other sisters who's going to replace it? And Mother would say, well, you know, it's, this was a work of God. If mm-hmm. God wants it to go on, it will. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> it was that detachment. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. And isn't there a certain peace and freedom we have when we're detached that right. it doesn't have to be this particular way, but we can just be docile to the present moment. And it doesn't rely on me. Yes. Meaning I could do the best job I possibly could. Mm-hmm. But if this isn't what God wants to happen, it mm-hmm. ultimately will fade away. And I think the fact, as, as you alluded to earlier, and Michael talked about the idea of the rapid expansion and the global mm-hmm. expansion of EWTN in multiplicity of formats in every way, in the digital space and online mm-hmm. and radio, et cetera, um, has shown, at least at this point in time, that if we, if we stay true to Mother's mission, and I always think it's yeah. important for us to all remember this isn't our mission here. Right. This was a mission was given by God to Mother Angelica, mm-hmm. and we are continuing to help her with her mission. And that's what the nuns used to say, too, and Mother would mm-hmm. say, it's not the sister's mission, it's my mission. Yes, and at the same time, she'd say, well, I'm the donkey, right? That right. he chose right. <laughs> to lead it. <laughs> right. So she had that certain humility in the face of it, but she was going to be obedient to what God called her to do, even though it seemed ridiculous. But God did the miraculous. Right. Like you alluded to, the (laughs) idea, I'm just a donkey pulling the cart, right? That's right. She used to say. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, we're celebrating Mother Angelica. Uh, You know, we've been all week, and we will continue throughout the day. Uh, You know, we've got the Mass coming up in just a couple of Mm -hmm. minutes from Rome. And after that, we've got still a, a, a arsenal of programming coming up for the rest of the day. Uh, commemorating Mother Angelica, special Woman of Grace program. Uh, they might be saints. A really exciting one that we mm-hmm. did on Rhoda Wise, and you know a lot about Rhoda Wise. Yes, and we visited, you know, her home, which is there. It's kind of a museum and a place where you can pray as well. And there's a rem- remarkable story at the end of that. They might be saints segment. And we also have uh, on our website, you can learn a lot more about uh, Mother Angelica and her life and legacy at ew10.com forward slash. Mother Angelica. And I think we're moments away from going to the Mass. Uh, but uh, with Bishop Reka. 
Yeah, so it looks like um, what a treasure that is that there in the heart of the city of Rome that we're going to have this Mass with our own bishop, Bishop Reka. So we um, thank God for making that happen. Right, and we're just waiting for that event to really... Uh, we, we saw some video from it earlier. Uh, it looks like a beautiful, beautiful church. And uh, so, but, you know, many times with these things, mm -hmm. the church has its own timing. <laughs> right. <laughs> doesn't necessarily follow the script that was laid out by Tom Price. And so uh, we, we will stay with you and you will stay with us while we wait for this great event to occur. And... Uh, and there it is. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God, who for the salvation of the world brought about the paschal sacrifice, be favorable to the supplications of your people, so that Christ, our high priest, interceding on our behalf, may by his likeness to ourselves bring us reconciliation, and by his equality with you free us from our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, 
they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Because you have seen me, says the Lord, blessed are those who have not seen but still believe. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever disobeys the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. sisters and brothers, welcome to Rome and Holy Spirit Church, the Chiesa di Santo Spirito in Sassia, on this magnificent occasion to recall with gratitude the life and mission of Mother Mary of the Annunciation, whom we know as Mother Angelica. I have to confess right away that other than by reputation, I never had the occasion to meet her personally. 
I have met, however, so many who have been touched by her life and the ministry of EWTN Network that she founded, many of whom encountered Christ and are Christian because of her life and witness. Assuredly, her life has been an inspiration to many, and, dare I say, a challenge for some. We gather today to mark the centenary of her birth on April 20th, 1923, in Canton, Ohio, to Italian immigrant parents. Her early life was not easy. Family life was difficult and painful at times, nor did she have a conducive environment in the formative years of her life that we come to expect today for one to excel and succeed. She described her early life with her mother as a matter of mere survival, like a pair of refugees from one crisis to the next. The brokenness she experienced, however, prepared her for a further grace, an encounter with the healing power of Christ. In spite of many setbacks with family life, with school, with her health, she didn't consider herself a victim, as broadly understood today, or a victim of circumstances, but an instrument of God's providence and a witness to God's healing grace. For instance, she said, or it was said of her by an author, that she suffered she had a stomach ailment that Rizzo had from 1939 continued to cause severe abdominal pain despite the extensive medical treatment she received. And her mother to took her to Rhoda Wise, who was hailed as a mystic and stigmatic and who claimed to receive visions of St. Therese of Lisieux. Wise instructed Rizzo to pray a novena, a nine-day course of prayers, and made the girl promise that she would spread devotion to the saint if she was cured. On January 17, 1943, following the novena's final day, Rizzo declared that she woke up with little pain and the ab abdominal lump causing it had vanished. This experience profoundly touched her. She believed that God had performed a miracle and she traced her lifelong commitment to God to this event. She later told an interviewer, at that point, I knew that God knew me and loved me and was interested in me. All I wanted to do after my healing was give myself to Jesus. God knew me and loved me and was interested in me and give myself to Jesus. Those were her words. And they describe the impact and the effects of an encounter with Christ, which was amplified by her love of the Eucharist, both at Mass and in adoration. The journey to truth, the journey to understand the deepest part of ourselves, begins with an encounter with the mystery, that is, with God, most often in an unexpected moment when we least expect it. And that event is similar to many narrated in the Gospels, even more poignantly so during the Easter season. Encounters with Christ, the experience of healing and providence, were road markers for her on her exceptional life journey. Most especially for the child Jesus, the Santo Nino, the divine child, who for her was love incarnate. She fostered devotion to the divine child, and as a result, she shared her experience with all and for all as she promised she would. And she would not, could not remain silent in the midst of the greatest gift she came to know in her life, Jesus Christ. She sought to proclaim it from the rooftops, through the airwaves, and through satellite and a network to the entire world. Our readings touch on the amazing phenomenon illustrated by those same sentiments. In the Acts of the Apostles, you can see how unsettling the Jesus and even more so the risen Jesus question became for the Sanhedrin, the high religious authorities, as they attempted to maintain good civil order. Quite obviously, 
It was a neurologic issue they wished they had, didn't have to contend with and tried to suppress. Naturally, they thought that everything was returning to normal after his death. On the cross and burial, it was so definitive. So the fact that his disciples were teaching in the public squares had to be dealt with. Thus, they were ordered to stop teaching in that name. The more they were told not to, the more compelled they felt to do so. Not unlike what Mother was doing, nothing could stop this dynamo of faith. Neither she nor the apostles held back. The more they saw that God or the experience of God is removed from the civil discourse in society, the more they felt they had to find new ways to proclaim and teach in that name, in the name of Jesus. For the power was not in them, them personally, but in the saving name of Jesus that is one who saves. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth, we proclaimed a few moments ago in the responsorial psalm, and it was for her. Above all, the apostles were witnesses of what happened to Jesus. They could not deny the experience and willingly shared it with those who came to know them. In our episode in the Acts of the Apostles today, this included even preaching about that name to the court officials. And about this passage, St. John Chrysostom writes, God allowed the apostles to be brought to trial so that their adversaries might be instructed if they so desired. And the apostles are not irritated by the judges. They plead with them compassionately, with tears in their eyes, and their only aim is to free them from error and from divine wrath. Only later in tomorrow's reading do we learn that Peter's preaching had some effect. One of them, Gamaliel, reasoned that if this truly is of God, they would not be able to stop it. And if it is not the movement would die out naturally. So their preaching bore some initial fruit, and his analysis was correct. Mother's religious name, Sister Mary Angelica of the Annunciation, also provides another clue for our consideration. The angel comes with a message, a message of hope. Messaging is quite foundational as part of the angelic mission, we don't have to go to God. No, God has come to us in a way we can see him face to face and can understand. If we use the incarnation as an explanation, we could say God became man. The word became flesh. That is, the word didn't merely become a nice idea. The word became flesh. Salvation, the victory over sin and death, won for us by Christ, needs to be trumpeted, utilizing all the new means and methods available to us today. The message of salvation offers us hope. Perhaps the question comes to mind when we hear about Christianity. The question is this, is it possible to live this way, the way Christ proposed? The apostles, saints, and our tradition over 2,000 years suggest that yes, it is indeed possible. And reading Mother Angelica's biography, one can attest, yes, it's possible. It can be done, and is done by countless new witnesses in their own life circumstances today. Their lives are lived worthily, lived in hope in the midst of adversity, and lived by deeds of mercy rather than criticism or skepticism. Li lives of steadfast certainty rather than constant victimization. The zealousness of the apostles would not survive if the saving event of Christ had not occurred, if his resurrection was a fiction, if he had not sent the Holy Spirit to be handed on from one generation to the next to the present day. We are truly blessed to know about such witnesses, and they can teach us about keeping our eyes focused and fixed on Christ himself. They wouldn't be able to do so if Christ were not the foundation and center of their lives. 
My friends, on this centenary of Mother's birth, during the season of the during this Easter season here in Rome, in the church under the patronage of the Holy Spirit, where the image of divine mercy is enshrined, we gather in grateful hope and appreciation for this amazing religious woman with the love of Christ in her heart and intrepid apostolic zeal, sought to share the saving message of Christ to the world. As in the past, we commend her to God's abiding mercy and draw strength from her conviction that we, too, can be bold witnesses for Christ. We must give our lives to Jesus and let ourselves be transformed by him. Is it possible to live this way? It was for the apostles on mission and the early church. It was for Mother Angelica, and it is possible for us too. Again, we thank the Lord for this extraordinary gift of her life and commend her to the Lord's merciful gaze. May God bless you all. Risen Lord, as we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the birth of Mother Angelica, the beloved foundress of Eternal Word Television Network, we thank you for the gift of her life and her dedicated service to the Church. We humbly come before you seeking your blessings. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, the leader of the Catholic Church, that he may be guided by the Holy Spirit in his teachings and decisions and be strengthened in his efforts to promote peace, justice, and love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Per le intenzioni di WTN affinché questa rete globale di media cattolici possa continuare a diffondere gli insegnamenti della Chiesa, promuovere la devozione all'Eucaristia, alla Beata Vergine Maria e alla santità della vita. Preghiamo. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. Per tutti i donatori di WTN, qui soutiennent généreusement la mission d'évangélisation pour les médias, enfin qu'ils soient bénis pour leur générosité et leur engagement à diffuser le message de l'Évangile. Nous prions le Seigneur. Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayers. Pour nuestros afiliados, para que continúen sosteniendo las enseñanzas de la Iglesia Católica, promoviendo el mensaje del Evangelio, en sus propios países y siendo ejemplo vivo de la presencia de Cristo en la tierra. Oremos, Señor. We pray to Lord. Min ajli jamia al amilin fil kita al alami, ka yastakhdimu mawahibahum wa minasatahum al alamiya, li ta'aziz al haqiqa, wal jamal, wal khair, wa yusaidu fi binai sakafati al hayat, wal mahabba. Il Rabbi Natlub, Christ, our risen Lord, hear our prayer. За всех зрителей и сторонников и WTN, чтобы они были благословлены благодатью укреплять свою веру, углублять свое посвящение Евхаристии при Святой Деве Марии и жить как радостные и верные ученики Иисуса Христа. Молимся Господу. We pray. Für das Wachstum von EWTN möge die Verbreitung der frohen Botschaft des Evangeliums bei den Seelen auf fruchtbaren Boden fallen, damit EWTN weiterhin eine Quelle der Inspiration, Bildung 
und spirituellen Nahrung für Katholiken und für alle Suchende nach Wahrheit auf der ganzen Welt sein möge, beten wir zum Herrn und Christ our Lord. Father, we thank you for the gift of Mother Angelica and her profound impact on the Church and the world through EWTN. May her life and legacy continue to inspire us to live authentic Catholic lives, and may her intercession bring us closer to you. We ask this through risen, our risen Christ, our Lord. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope and Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come on my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And we are back here. On EWTN Radio, I'm Doug Keck here with Father Joseph Mary Wolf, and hopefully uh, you were able to listen to the wonderful Mass that just came from Rome, Santo Spiritu in Rome, uh, a Mass honoring our beloved Foundress on the 100th anniversary of her birthday, uh, and we uh, appreciate what a wonderful, beautiful Mass mm -hmm. it was. Hopefully, if you get a chance, uh, you can go online and catch it uh, on our on-demand page as a replay, but uh, we also want you to stay right here on radio, right, Father Joseph? Exactly, yes. And two things that uh, Bishop Rakes said that really uh, spoke to me, I think were inspiring. He said that Mother didn't see herself as a victim, but an instrument of God's providence. He was talking about her difficult upbringing. But then he referred to the first reading from Acts of the Apostles, where they said, well, we have to obey God rather than men, and they just continued to bear witness. And he said of Mother, nothing could stop this dynamo of faith. And it wasn't a power in themselves, in the apostles or Mother, but it was a power from above. They shared their encounter with Jesus. Absolutely, and also from the Mass itself, uh, in the psalm, uh, it says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, mm. and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. And we think mm -hmm. of, of all the heartache Mother had in her life and how she could connect to so many people because of that through her shows. So where do you turn when you're broken? Is there any help? And Mother answers with a resounding yes. Uh, we can turn to the Lord. We'll find strength. We'll find support. We'll find comfort in him. Also, in, uh, in the reading from John, there's also uh, the idea that for the, for the one whom God sent speaks the words of God, mm -hmm. he does not ration his gift of the Spirit. Yeah. So, so there is that providence that if you do what mm -hmm. God's will is, God will provide. Yeah, and Father Mark referred to that in his homily this morning. Uh, one of the sisters talked about those early days and she said it was like a Pentecost. We all just felt, you know, alive with the Holy Spirit. We were behind Mother and what she was doing. And God was opening doors and he was doing marvelous things. So we really, like, like Father Mark said this morning, he's not miserly. You know, he's not calculating his gift of the Spirit. He pours it out to those who are willing to receive it and to be instruments of the Spirit. I'm wondering with that, too, because it seems like in some ways... Our Lord works in stages. There is that mm -hmm. Pentecostal right. moment, that uh, fire. But then there's that kind of coming down from the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the transfiguration. I always think of, hey, let's let's just stay up here. And our yeah. Lord says, no, no, no. I, I did this for you mm -hmm. so that you're prepared to go and do what we need to do. In some ways, it's the same thing. You have the early days yeah. of the Spirit mm -hmm. and getting things started, the fire. Right. But then it needs to move into, as Mother would say, even from the church perspective, a very much more sacramentalized approach. Mm -hmm. And one of the sisters actually spoke about the same thing to me one time and how now it's more contemplative. And it's also as you referred to with the Transfiguration, now taking up the cross, that's part of carrying on the mission. So yes, we enjoy the consolations of the Holy Spirit, but also bear your share of the hardship which the gospel entails. You know, St. Paul would write to Timothy. And so there is that element too, that with Christ, we bear part of this suffering 
for the good of souls. Right. And one of the, uh, you know, they had the wonderful uh, group of different employees from EWTN's Vatican office there, mm-hmm. Monsi Alvarado, the president of news, and others who we saw uh, doing some of the readings and then uh-huh. at the intercessions as well. And one of the intercessions that uh, was put together from our own mass that I know you did mm-hmm. uh, struck me earlier in the sense of dealing with th- those who've passed on, those mm-hmm. who helped mother in the early days who've passed on, and there's quite a few of those, aren't there? There are among our own employees, board members, and of course so many viewers who over the years have been uh, such supporters. Some mothers uh, would say this network is brought to you by you, and that's true. And what a blessing that is, you know, if we watch EWTN, uh, that we have prayer spots or we have little faith spots or something that will inspire us and motivate us in the faith rather than you know the same thing kind of <laughs> hawking something again and again right and what's great about that too is because of the catholic understanding of the church triumphant mm-hmm. and and uh, you know the church suffering and the church militant but between the, those suffering and 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 talking about the, we have so many of those people. They're still with us, mm-hmm. uh, just like the saints are with us. And so we continue to have that prayer support from them as well. And with that said, we're going to take a quick break. Doug Keck here with Father Joseph Mary Wolf as we continue wrapping up the Mass from uh, Rome and also as EW10 continues celebrating Mother's 100th anniversary of her birth. Stay with us. EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. I think there are so many people, people who just come up to me, you you wouldn't believe it, in Rome, in Mexico, and are you the priest that's on EWTN Network? And I I say, yes, yes, I'm, I'm that priest. You know, I watch your program all the time. I mean, these are people you know, uh, from all over the world that are actually benefiting from it. I hear what my programs do to benefit people. I know there must be, you know, thousands of other people who are benefited by, you know, hundreds of other programs that Mother Angelica has made available. And, you know, it's it, it, to the people of God, Mother Angelica has made a huge difference. To people of faith, Mother Angelica has made a huge difference. But I think, too, there are many more people who are watching this, uh, these programs uh, than those who are ensconced in the church. I think there are people who are searching for a reason to come back to the church. And I think there are actually people out there channel surfing who truly are looking for something beyond the materialism and in the, the quasi-hedonism of the world. And, and she's given it to them by a remarkable vision, a remarkable faith, a remarkable trust in God, and by remarkably bringing together a lot of people of similar faith who could share that charism. We have another call. Hello? Hello. Oh, well, where are you from? I'm from Massachusetts. How old are you? I'm seven years old. And what is your question? Well, I don't really have a question, but I just want to tell you this. Um, when I grow up, I want to be a nun like you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> EWTN Radio commemorates the 100th anniversary of Mother Angelica's birth. Happy birthday, Mother Angelica. And we are back, and uh, sounds a little like answering the call there, doesn't it, Father <laughs> it does. Joseph? Uh, well, we get to, uh, I'm Doug Keck here with Father Joseph Mary Wolf as we continue our coverage here on EWTN Radio for Mother's 100th anniversary of her birth. Uh, but for the program that airs on the weekends that we do, uh, Answering the Call, where Mother uh, takes on the questions uh, from mm-hmm. our classic TV shows like that, right? Yeah, and I still am learning from Mother. And, you know, Mother in in his sandals, it was a series that she produced, she said she wanted to live to be 100 years old because she said you don't know the value of just one more act of love of God. And you know what? She's still teaching <laughs> 100 years after her birth through the network, and we're still learning from her. And speaking of the network, uh, we have a clip with Mother talking about the early days and how it got started and why it got started. In 1973, the Lord began to give me books to write, and as a result of those books, our sisters printed them, and we gave them away. 
and people began to ask me to give talks. So I did, and I got invited to a channel in Chicago, Illinois, uh, that was a Protestant television network, and I was invited to a talk show. As I walked in the studio, like this one, only much, 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 much smaller, I realized how small it was, and I said, wow, to myself. I said, it doesn't take much to reach the masses, you know. But small. I said, Lord, I've got to have one of these. <laughs> I didn't think it was asking too much. <laughs> but I thought, what would you do with it, you know? You know, but I came home and made a tape. It was a disaster. Oh, it was terrible. I mean, really bad, bad. I looked like Grandma Moses sitting in a rocking chair. <laughs> and most of you are too young to know Andy Gump, but that's how I look. And I was ready to junk it, you know. And the sister said, no, Mother, you can do it. I said, okay, one more time, I'll try. Well, I did, but I didn't know what to do with it. I had a tape about this big in my hand. I didn't know what to do with it. So I asked a friend of mine, and she said, well, why don't you send it to CBN? So they called me. I was surprised. She brought it there. They called me in two weeks and said, Mother, um, we saw your tape, and we think it's very good. I said, you do? I said, yes. Can you make 60 of them? I said, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it means to make 60 half-hour shows? I didn't. But I thought, well, why not try? So we, we found a place, and I made 60 shows, sent them to them. was on another series when I saw a synopsis of a movie called The Word, a blasphemous movie, to depict Jesus as a false prophet. So I noticed that network I was, at, was going to air it. So I asked to see the manager. I said, are you going to air this movie? He said, yes. I said, are you a Christian? He said, yes. I said, you, you air a blasphemous movie. Oh, he said, do you think God cares? Well, that time I was ready to. I said, yes, he cares, and I care. Are you going to air it or not? Anyway, he said he was, and I walked out of the studio. I told him I would not air my programs. I would no longer make programs or air them on his station. He said to me, you leave this station, you're off of television. I said, oh, no, I don't need you. I only need God. I'll build my own. And that's what you call having a big mouth. <laughs> but I just didn't have the slightest idea what to do. And that's, we made it, we built it, we did build the studio. I came home, I told her sisters, and that, that morning we decided to build a garage. And when I told them I wouldn't know what to do, I said, where can I build a studio? And they said, garage. Garage. They went down and I said to the contractor was already digging a foundation and I said, Hold it. He said, What's the matter? I said, We're not gonna build a garage. He said, What are you gonna build? I said, A television studio. <laughs> he said, A what? <laughs> I said, Television studio. We did. It's a wonderful story. I have a book on it. You ought to get one. It shows all the wonders, wonders of God's providence. Unbelievable providence. He wanted this network for you in these serious times. The one and only Mother Angelica, on her 100th anniversary of her birth, being a prophetess once again. Hey, eh, Father? Yes, and what a blessing the network has been, what a difference it has made in the lives of you and I, and so many throughout the world. And we just thank God for his mercy and inspiring us. And you know, in every age, he meets the challenges of that age by raising up people to proclaim the gospel in new ways. 
Right, absolutely. And we hope uh, through EWTN Radio, we're doing that on a regular basis. And you can go to EWTN.com forward slash radio and find out all our great programs. And related to this, we've still got great programs throughout the day. And, of course, online, you go to our website. You can check out EWTN On Demand. We've got 100 episodes of Mother Angelica Live Classics, 32 episodes of From the Heart with Mother Angelica, the Mother Angelica Award Show. We've got the Road to Wise story there. We've got a uh, bookmark that's uh, with Raymond uh, with his book on Mother Angelica, a chapel of St. Michael by Mother Angelica. So there's plenty of great material, audio only. There's Answering the Call, of course, our mm-hmm. program as well. Any final thoughts you have? Just gratitude. You know, I, I was thinking the other day how different my life would have been if EWTN had never happened. I had never seen this nun needing an engineer to help. And I had stayed up in Iowa as an engineer up there, and I just thank God that I was brought here. I could see the wonders of the growth of this network. I could learn how to grow in my spiritual life, and so just gratitude today. And gratitude for you, too, Mm -hmm. Father. Thank you so much uh, for being here with me. Thank you all for joining us for this wonderful program on Mother Angelica. And we'll be uh, talking all day long about Mother Angelica and our 100th anniversary on all of our programs. Thank you so much. 